Well, good morning. This is uh, Ian R. Crane, and it's the morning of Wednesday, 3rd of July, 2019. And it's uh, another glorious morning here on the edges of Dartmoor in uh, southwest England. And uh, it's a few degrees cooler up here, a few hundred feet above sea level. Uh, it's uh, very pleasant in the valleys. In fact, uh, people sitting outside in the garden enjoying uh, an early morning coffee. But uh, here, well, there's a fresh breeze that blows the cobwebs away and I have a stunning views out to the uh, to Torbay and the English Channel. Well, the title of this morning's broadcast is there are too many slaves, far too many slaves on the plantation. And uh, especially with what the establishment know is coming, i.e. the uh, massive impact on agriculture as a direct result of the Maunda minimum. Or, of course, is it the Eddy minimum or is it unnamed? It seems that there is some dispute uh, amongst um, uh, astronomers who um, uh, want to either refer to it as the Maunder minimum, which is what it was called back in the, uh, what is it, 16th, 17th century, 400 years ago, uh, the Eddy minimum or yet to be named, put your name on it. But anyway, either way, there's a solar minimum, which is playing havoc with the climate and the establishment have known about this and its imminent arrival for some considerable time. Thus, the climate change or global warming scam in an attempt to blame humanity for their minuscule impact on uh, rising CO2 levels, which uh, apparently account for 0.4% of our atmosphere, and um, yet blame humanity so that we can tax it and use it as a control mechanism. And, uh, you know, you see this with the push for the new green deal, the green agenda, and uh, thus the mass emotional manipulation of the masses by constructs such as Extinction Rebellion in uh, an effort to be able to accelerate the necessary policies to effectively control and increasingly control the way in which the slaves are able to operate and behave on the plantation. Well, that control mechanism uh, takes many, many forms. And, um, you know, for those lucky, lucky people in Glasgow, London, Manchester, Liverpool, Birmingham, Cardiff and Bristol, because today is the day that Vodafone unleashes its 5G network in those areas. Of course, very, very few people have 5G devices, but uh, nonetheless, it's part of the infrastructure rollout, which is so crucial to the Internet of Things and, of course, to autonomous vehicles and to control to developing algorithms which manipulate people's thought process, which manipulate the way in which they think and therefore manipulate the way in they, which they behave, drawing people ever more into the hive mind. So much so that it is obviously apparent that uh, you know it's becoming increasingly difficult to find people that are actually capable of independent thought. But the interesting thing is, that uh, more and more people are starting to realise that they are caught up in something and uh, they are starting to realise just how pernicious it is and how pernicious this control agenda really is and they are starting to fight back. So, you know, why is 5G rolling out in those cities? Because they can. Because despite the fact that a number of people, pretty much led by Pippa King, I have to say, have been trying to raise awareness of the smart city agenda, and particularly that of Glasgow, for probably close on a decade now. But uh, there's not enough interest. The slaves are caught up in their day-to-day -day lives of uh, trying to keep a roof over their head and food on the table. And uh, so the surveillance state has experimented on Glasgow for quite some time now, but uh, the Internet of Things takes it to a whole new level. Well, just because you don't live in those cities, um, then don't uh, uh, think that it's, um, it's all rosy for you. Because Vodafone, on their own website, go on to brag that 5G 
will arrive later this year in Birkenhead, Blackpool, Bournemouth, Guildford, Newbury, Portsmouth, Plymouth, Reading, Southampton, Stoke-on-Trent, Warrington and Wolverhampton. And of course, all this hype by the British government that uh, 5G would be trialled in just 16 cities. But uh, there's no intention just to trial it. The infrastructure is being rolled out at a phenomenal rate of knots because they can, because there isn't sufficient opposition. Unfortunately, there are communities that are waking up to this. And, uh, you know, the number of uh, people who are making contact now seeking counsel as to how they can challenge this agenda. And of course, you know, they are the ones who are realizing that the only way in which you stop this is for communities, community by community, to engage with their local authorities and get their local councillors, their elected representatives, to understand that their acquiescence to this is effectively granting the establishment and the telecoms companies the permission to roll this out. Yes, of course, it is a, a significant national infrastructure project, interestingly known as a SNP. But um, despite that, local authorities still have a responsibility for the health, safety and well-being of the people in those communities. So hold those people's feet to the flyer, uh, to the fire, as is the case in places like Glastonbury, in uh, Trafford, and uh, in, here in uh, Totnes. And I know Stroud in Gloucestershire uh, is uh, doing the same. And, you know, I know people say, what's the point of engaging? Well, that's exactly what they want you to think. They want you to think, oh, there's nothing you can do. But there is. There is a hell of a lot that you can do, but it certainly needs more than one or two people. It needs community groups. It needs communities to become active in resisting this uh, pernicious agenda. And it's having some considerable impact because in uh, um, a part of the country that will remain nameless right now, but um, some senior leadership uh, players in the, in the corporate world are starting to get concerned that they're not asking the right questions, that they're not doing their own due diligence that they are simply assuming that the telecom companies have done all the necessary research, have done all the necessary uh, health checks, and that everything that they are rolling out falls within the safety standards. Well, those safety standards leave something to be desired. And uh, as uh, was clearly evident in the Senate back in February this year, when Senator Blumenthal held the industry, the telecoms industry, to account and they were forced to admit that there is not a single independent study which states that 5G frequencies are safe. And of course the reality is that there are people who suffer as a result of the EMF smog that exists without 5G. The reality is that the 5G is going to increase the intensity of that smog exponentially. So, um, you know, the fat lady ain't even warming up yet. The telecoms companies think that they can just steamroller this out and uh, they can get the infrastructure in place before people actually realise what has been erected at the end of their street, or not actually even at the end of their street, outside their home. Because for 5G to be effective, as was reported, in, I believe, in the Daily Telegraph, um, I think even a couple of years ago, that uh, some 400,000 additional transmitters would be necessary for 5G to be effective. Actually, that is a massive understatement because, of course, had they told the truth, then it might have uh, really got people's attention because the reality is there's going to need to be a transmitter receiver every few hundred yards. And because the frequencies find it difficult to get through organic material, the likelihood is that those transmitter receivers are going to literally be at the end of every corridor in every office building. And uh, Vodafone, no less, are also bragging that uh, they are looking to um, place 5G transmitters beneath manhole covers. So that particularly for the uh, 
um, use by autonomous vehicles. So there is something really not right. And it is up to each and every one of us to do the appropriate and necessary research to be able to articulate those concerns. And of course, the more we share, eventually, just like the uh, corporate leaders that I've just uh, alluded to, eventually those people realize that actually, you know what, this affects them and it affects their families too. And yet they are simply assuming that somebody else has done the necessary due diligence. And that is proving, of course, to be the Achilles heel because there isn't any due diligence. And if you ask Vodafone or uh, EE to provide you with the data that proves 5G frequencies to be safe, they will simply refer you to Public Health England or ICNERP, both of whom have been discredited, discredited in terms of uh, up-to-date current data and analysis on the health impacts or negative health impacts of 5G frequencies. So down to each and every one of us. And of course, the 5G Is It Safe tour will commence in September, run for five solid weeks around the country. But there are a few precursor events. And uh, the first one of those will be in London on um, uh, Saturday, July 13th where I shall be speaking at Conway Hall in London. And then I believe that I'm being joined there by Sasha Stone. And then two days later in Exeter, and uh, then three days after that in Torquay, and then a few days after that at a small venue in uh, Swansea. So um, that's just to uh, start sowing the seeds. And then the tour proper will kick off in uh, September. And uh, then of course, uh, after the 5G tour, we have AV 10.1 and the tickets went on sale at midnight on uh, Monday and uh, it's staggering, but um, almost half of the tickets have sold within the first 48 hours. And uh, fortunately, I have a venue that is expandable, i.e. partitions can be moved. So I'm already looking at uh, increasing the capacity for AV 10.1. Some outstanding speakers lined up. Not, not least David Dubine, who will be flying in from Taiwan to give an update on uh, the issues surrounding crop production, which are already, already causing grave concern within the agricultural community, within the futures community, the commodities traders, and um, with the exception of China, I'm not really aware of any other media picking up on the likely impact later this year of uh, massive crop failures around the country. And the extreme weather, of course, was brought home a few days ago with uh, this phenomenal hailstorm in uh, Guadalajara in Mexico, where in places some three, four feet of hailstones descended um, and uh, the military had to be called in to get people out of their vehicles because they couldn't move, open the doors because of the ice. And uh, midsummer snowstorms in uh, Sweden. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously extreme weather occurring throughout the world. Nothing to do with man-made climate change, although maybe the geoengineering has uh, certainly contributed. But uh, the reality is this is the well-known impact of the solar minimum. And, uh, you know, people need to start looking at the solar minimum and understanding how this will impact on agriculture and how this will impact on the slaves on the plantation. Well, finally this morning, I'm going to talk about uh, Lynn and uh, David Noakes and in particular uh, uh, Lynn Tyre. And uh, Lynn, of course, is currently in hiding um, because given the choice between wallowing in a French jail on remand or uh, being on the run, Hobson's choice, eh? Um, but, uh, you know, it's a no brainer, really, isn't it? So I'm pleased to report that word reaches me that Lynn is safe and um, uh, who knows where, but uh, she is safe and um, uh, intends to stay that way until such time as the extraordinary rendition, i.e. the extradition, the extraordinary rendition that has been imposed by uh, the corrupt justices uh, Snow and Supperstone, Michael Snow and Michael Supperstone. And... Um, you know, they have abused the European arrest warrant, which was put in place initially to enable 
terrorists to be um, extradited between European countries so that they could face trial in the countries in which they had perpetrated their acts of terrorism. And here is a classic abuse because on zero evidence, Justices Supperstone and Snow have ruled that Lynn Thayer should be subject to extraordinary rendition for developing GT math. And the irony is that, uh, of course, um, Justice uh, Nicholas Lorraine Smith made it very clear in the uh, Newman hearing back in November that GC math wasn't on trial, that the efficacy of GC math wasn't uh, on trial, and that he had no doubt that many people had benefited from GC math, and he hoped that many people will benefit in the future. Well, of course, not if Big Pharma has its way. But the irony is that an offshore supplier of GC math is now openly advertising on places like uh, Facebook and um, taking full advantage, understandably, of the increasing awareness of GC math and immunotherapy. And you may have also noticed that uh, there have been a number of articles in the lamestream media on immunotherapy as Big Pharma starts to try and uh, damage limit by saying, well, yes, immunotherapy, there's a lot of work going on about it, and hopefully in the not too distant future, immunotherapy will be available to the NHS. It's always somewhere down the road. It's available now, but the MHRA and Big Pharma do not want it freely available. They want to control the supply of all medication. And of course, if Big Pharma does get its hands um, on GCMath, then uh, the likelihood is that it will be diluted to the point where it's ineffectual. And then they'll go, see, see, it doesn't work at all. So it's really important that uh, people like Lynn Thayer and David Noakes have the freedom and people have the opportunity to decide for themselves what treatment that they will take once they are diagnosed with, uh, with cancer. And of course, the nanny state wants to remove all that. Well, meanwhile, John Smith of the Common Law Courts has been extremely active. And of course, he's not giving up on Lynn Thayer's uh, case. And, uh, you know, he's um, in and out of the, uh, the courts. Of course, the courts don't want to talk to him. But interestingly, they do not charge him with contempt because they know he is fundamentally correct in what he's presenting to the courts. So they simply try and, well, just dismiss him. But uh, John has now written to the Lord Chief Justice and the Lord Chancellor. And I'm going to put um, a copy of that, uh, that text that he's written to them under this video. It'll be later this morning. But I'm also going to put the contact details for the uh, Lord Chief Justice and the Lord Chancellor. And John asks that um, people write or telephone or email to both of these uh, individuals. And of course, the Lord Chancellor is David Gork, MP, and um, asks them to bring about either a hearing or simply to annul the extraordinary rendition order um, put in place by Justices uh, Supperstone and Snow. And uh, at that point, Lynn will be able to once again walk freely in the UK without fear of uh, being extradited to France so that she cannot develop or further develop GC math. Now, David Noakes comes off tag in a couple of weeks, which means that uh, he will no longer be restricted by uh, curfew. And at that point, I hope that um, alternative health groups around the country will invite David to come speak to them and uh, listen to David's story. The alternative health, and of course it shouldn't be alternative, it should be the health community. The alternative health is, is the allopathic health, which has only been around since, um, well, the early 20th century when um, J.D. Rockefeller put uh, tremendous effort into shutting down all natural medicines, just like he shut down all uh, electric vehicle production and the electric tramways so that he could foist um, hydrocarbons uh, on the uh, wider population and, of course, literally milk the populace uh, in the process.
But uh, that aside, the alternative health community has never been more important. And uh, David Noakes, of course, is the epitome of somebody who has stood up to Big Pharma, has developed a, an extremely effective cancer treatment up to and including a cure. And the establishment and Big Pharma not only want to jail him, which they did, now, of course, he is also potentially going to be subject to an application for extraordinary rendition to France to make sure that he's unable ever to pursue his quest to provide a, an affordable treatment, effective treatment for those who have effectively been written off by Big Pharma due to the fact that chemo or radiotherapy hasn't worked. So please do check out um, the uh, YouTube later today when I'll have put all this information under the video. And uh, meanwhile, if you are interested in coming along to AV 10.1, then my counsel would be to secure your ticket sooner rather than later. It's going to be a phenomenal event with uh, some phenomenal speakers. And, uh, you know, David By Dubine coming from Taiwan, you know, everyone who buys in to the mythology of anthropogenic climate change, previously known as man-made global warming, needs to come along to this. But of course they won't because they've got so much intellectual investment and emotional investment in the narrative that humanity is the cause of what's unfolding now that uh, they'll just stick their hands over their ears and cover their eyes and say, no, 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 no. I don't want to believe this is true because I don't want to acknowledge that basically I've been taken for a sucker. Well, you have a great day and um, I will be back on Friday morning at 8.30. You take care now.